The theme for this year's meeting is celebrating diversity, but that can mean many different things to many different people. So here to discuss what the research of genomics has traditionally looked like and why the need to refocus are two experts in the field, Dr. Michael Bauer and Dr. Neil Hancher. Thank you both for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with that, that exact topic. What has genomic research traditionally looked like and who has benefited from it the most? Well, I'd say that, you know, for a variety of reasons, you know, uh, traditionally genomics research has focused, especially human genomics research has really focused on uh, um, populations of traditionally European ancestry and focused on the diseases that are very prevalent in those groups. Um, and as a result, um, those groups have probably benefited more, although to be fair, everybody's benefited from human genomics, um, but maybe there's a little bit of inequity in terms of who has benefited more than others. And I see you nodding along, Dr. Bauer. So there has been a need to refocus here a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So like even in my research, when I go to work on different populations and there's just not sequencing available for those people. And so you miss out on those and then you're just like trying to play catch up to recruit and, and build up those resources. So. so why is focusing on diversity, equity and inclusion not only important for research, but for the people that it might benefit? I think, yeah, so we all kind of starting to learn that diverse groups bring different uh, things to a research um, efforts, but in the, it's in the small things that we're missing that to fill in the holes of, of the um, cancer research or whatever it is that uh, can be greatly affected. And is this something that we have maybe been noticing for quite some time? Are we slowly playing catch up here? Yeah, we're, we're sort of like quickly playing catch up after a long time. So <laughs> okay. it's, it's, been, uh, it's been something that's sort of um, been underseeding everything for a long time. But I think now we have the realization and now there's been more of an impetus to move towards having more inclusion, uh, having a greater respect for underrepresented groups and having more diversity as being part of our genomics generally. So now we're aware, we know that there is work to be done with regards to this. How do we build or maybe rebuild trust in some of these underrepresented communities? Yeah, I think trust is trust is a tricky thing um, because I think sometimes there's a presumption that there's no trust, and so people don't make the effort to try and engage those groups. Interesting. Um, and so that, that we shouldn't start with that presumption. That's the first thing. I think there are definitely persons and groups for, who are, who, for whom trust is a big issue. Um, and as with trust in any kind of relationship, it's, it takes sort of a, an investment to sort of ensure that those groups are brought along, make sure that, as, that it's not a single deal, right? You're not just doing a research project or a single paper, a single study, but there's a, a longitudinal relationship that's built up as part of that. And then the other big part about trust is people tend to trust people who are from their own communities. So we need to have more representation from these underrepresented groups among the researchers who are as well as the, the cohorts and communities that we're studying. You're nodding along. Yeah, it sounds like uh, long-term collaboration is kind of what's 100 needed. percent agree. I'm a part of the Public Education and Awareness Committee for um, ASHG, and we actually had um, some re researchers go out and do interviews with leaders in these different communities, and they saw that addressing that the past harms that were caused by um, some of the uh, testing and mm -hmm. that was done on minorities, but addressing that but then also educating them on how it can benefit them. And then, like you said, people educating minority students and them to go into the field, because they're the best ones to kind of communicate to their families, friends, and their communities. All right, final question for you both. Like I mentioned, this year's meeting theme is celebrating a genetic diversity. What does that mean to each of you? Um, to me, I think it's, uh, we kind of, it's in our diversity that we can build the full picture of the human um, condition or, or whatever. And so we celebrate that, our differences that kind of bring us all together in the end. Yeah, and I'd also say we celebrate the oneness, right? We're all sort of derived from the same groups and we, we, we have um, many, many common an ancestors in common. And so I think that we have the opportunity to celebrate that in its fullest breath, that means for people everywhere. Wonderful. Thank you both so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.